Hello brothers and sisters of Christ. I don't know if you can see this, but camera doesn't always show, has do as justice as much as your eyes will. But we just had a lot of smoke come in overnight and uh, I haven't put out any videos because I've had to shut down my computer and everything. It's gotten to 110 degrees on my deck here. And I understand it's a deck, it's got the roofing, metal roofing, so it's going to get hotter than normal. But I always come up to this and I look and I don't know if it's going to show us or not. And it's not going to zoom in whatsoever. There we go. Thank you, Lord. Shows it's 90 degrees on this deck already. What's been going on the last few days, I've been trying to get some studies out, brothers and sisters in Christ. I haven't been able to because I have no work. I have an AC unit that doesn't work. So when it gets 100 degrees out here, uh, the house starts getting really hot and I turned everything off yesterday. It got up to uh, 90 something yesterday. The day before was 110. We got all this smoke coming in and the temperature is supposed to get back up to 100 again, but the smoke might keep it down a little bit, but it's still super hot. So uh, the wind came through, the wind is gone. <laughs> if you look at everything now, I call that my uh, bonsai tree. Let's see if it'll do it. There it goes. It's actually a pine tree. It's just someone had cleared all the limbs off the uh, trunk of the tree all the way to the top, and that's all that's left for the, the green is that little top part right there. And it's a very tall tree to be up there down the hillside. But, um, but yeah, that smoke is just coming in. It's, it's making it so the sun can't even get through. And it's coming up from California, the fires that are in California. Yeah, you can see those California. So I'll do a little quick. Oops, sorry, didn't mean to like. I'll try to do a little quick walk and talk, and try to get it out to the brethren, uh, just to encourage the brethren to keep your eyes on Jesus Christ with the life that you're living, and to um, keep preaching the word of uh, the gospel, the plan of salvation. I had a brethren that asked me a question online, and. Um, you're going to have people that always do this, but they've, they've asked me this. I've answered it before in the past, but I'll answer it again. Uh, the eunuch, Philip at the well, or at the well, at the, the eunuch side of the road, he runs up to him and asks him, do you understand what you're reading? And he says, how can I accept somebody explain it to me? And then he explains to him about Jesus Christ and everything. And they always say, well, repentance wasn't mentioned. Repentance wasn't mentioned. There's a lot of places where repentance isn't mentioned, and there's a lot of places where repentance is mentioned. So they say, well, he didn't repent. And I'm like, yes, he did. And they like, well, how do you know he repented? I'm like, how do you know he didn't? It didn't say he didn't repent. And they look at me and say, I know it's a little word games. They look at me and say, well, it doesn't say he did. But if you're a King James Bible believer, you compare scripture with scripture. The Bible says, for godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. Here's the winds picking up. Repentance to salvation in order to get saved in that dispensation, which is today, this dispensation, you have to go through repentance. But I always do this to help the brethren out there, brothers, sisters in Christ. Okay, I want to teach you how to drive a car. Okay, you walk up to the car, you open the door, you set down, you put on your seat belt, you adjust your seat, and you're sitting there and you look at me. And I walk up and okay. I, now, you've already done that. Am I going to sit there and go, okay, let's see. Now you need to open the door with your hands, and you need to sit down, you need to adjust the seat, and then you need to put the seat belt on. You've already done it. Okay? You've done that first step. What do I do? We go to the next step. Okay? If that eunuch had already repented, Peter's not going to look, or Philip's not going to look at him and go, you need to repent. But, but I just did. No, 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 you need to repent. Do you, you mean you have to repent twice? Or, or No, you've got to repent. You, gotta, you know what I'm saying? It's dumb. I'm sorry to say it like that, but it's just dumb for people who attack true plan of salvation. If he's already repented, you don't have to tell him to repent. And there's stories in the Bible where they didn't repent and they were told they had to repent. Okay? Uh, there's times where they repented without being told to repent. I mean, time and time again, 
that's my biggest best answer to that to that brother out there do I believe that eunuch was saved um, I do um, God picked up Philip and wished him away as we walk down this road it's gonna be very hot even with the wind like when the wind is just hits you it's just sometimes can be just a heat wave part of me thinks I'm just gonna pack up and <laughs> Make a trip to Gold Beach or something. Head up north a little bit. Try to get ahead of the smoke. Um, but uh, but to answer that question, Brother and Sister Christ, it doesn't have to say repent every time someone gets saved. If they've already repented, you know, like the thief on the cross. I know this is before, it's the Old Testament. The thief had to repent and believe that Jesus is his king, perfect God uh, manifest in the flesh. And he did. But it didn't say repent. But he, he did. I showed that in scripture and I showed that in other studies where he repented. He changed. Okay. You know, we justly deserve this. And he used to rail on Jesus and, and mock Jesus along with everybody else. And then all of a sudden he changed. What happened? He repented in his heart. And then he comes out and says, We justly deserve this. He doesn't. You know, starts defending Jesus. Okay. There was a change. But uh, just, you know, like I said, just trust the Word of God. The Bible says in order to find salvation, you have to go through repentance. And the only way repentance works is if you have godly sorrow. Sorrow for your personal sins that you've sinned against Him. Okay? That's the only way to find salvation. I did a video on finding God's grace, how to find God's grace. That's what saves you. Jesus Christ saves you. Okay, when people hit you up, say, do you, do you believe in the Bible or don't you? Well, yeah, I'm a King James Bible believer. Okay, the Bible says, for godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. Do you believe that repentance comes before salvation, which the Bible preaches and teaches? If they say no, they're not a Bible believer. If they say yes, then you, got, you can work with that. And you can say, okay, now, in these spots where they say it doesn't mention repentance, that doesn't mean that they didn't repent. It means that they had already repented and there's no point in telling them to do something they already did. It's like telling your child, you walk into his bedroom and he's already cleaned that room top to bottom and you look at him and go, clean this room. It's already clean. Why would you tell him to clean the room? You know, you tell him to go do something else. The next thing that he gets to do, you know, I can just keep going on with examples, examples, but that's the best way I'd answer that. I mean, you can answer it more with scripture. Show situations where people did repent. Show people, situations where people were already in a repented state but the guy was reading that remember what i've always taught because the bible teaches it when you repent truly repent have godly sorrow in your heart towards jesus christ for your personal sins you look at god you're talking to god you don't really know him yet you say oh, god is just you know what do i do you know and that's when he points you to jesus christ what was that eunuch doing in the thing he was reading scripture God, he'd already, I believe he already had come to God broken, and he's like, now what do I do? God gave him those scriptures. He just, it just happened to be reading those scriptures, and Philip just happened to be running by at the exact same time. No, God's like, he doesn't leave people hanging. He points you to the truth. He shows you absolute truth. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but this thing looks, place looks like it's been wind battered. I, this morning when I walked down here, I had to throw a lot of the, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but a lot of this brush and these limbs got thrown to the side. Didn't mean to really cut us off in our conversation, but the trees during the summer get really dry around here. We got a lot of these trees are dying and uh, some of the oak trees and they'll get really dry and brittle. And then when we get the strong winds like we did last night and this morning, it just comes through here and just you find limbs and trees down and everything. But brother and sister Christ, that's the way I'd say it. Okay. Bottom line, when you come to God in a repentant state, the next step is He points you to Jesus Christ. He points you to who He is. Jesus Christ is God. He points you to who He is. Okay. So if it's pointing you to who He is and saying believe, that's because you've already repented. The Bible does not contradict itself. If you believe it does, you're not a Bible believer. Okay. And you're messed up and more likely than, than anything lost. All these people taking repentance out. So, 
uh, I'm trying to do some studies. I got a great study that I want to do uh, showing the transition in Acts. Uh, I was watching some of Peter Ruckman's question and answers, and he was able to answer some questions, and I was able to put a little bit more together and show why Acts is a transition book and that they were actually still preaching. You had to believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, absolutely, but they were still preaching, you know, like in the old, uh, when Jesus was still alive, repent uh, for the kingdom of heaven. They, they were preaching Jesus is coming back. I think it was Acts chapter 2, there's some passages in there where they're preaching that Jesus is, could come back then. They were preaching to the Jewish people, and if the Jewish people had accepted him, you know, uh, Jesus would have come back. The thousand year reign would have started. Uh, I've talked to a, a brother in Christ. I said, I asked him, I said, how many times did the Jewish people reject Jesus Christ as their king? Let's see if anybody else knows that one. How many times did the Jewish people reject Jesus Christ as a nation, as their king? All right. uh, I'll give you the little hint there. Uh, it's three. But let's see if you can find the three, the three times. Um, but there's just there's studies I want to do, brothers and sisters in Christ, and right now it's just been so hot, inside and out. I've had to turn off the computer. Uh, I've been trying to read some books. I've been trying to stay busy, but it's just you can't do anything outside, can't do anything inside, and even in the mornings it's like it's just I can barely get my regular stuff done. Getting in the backyard, attending the garden, taking care of the chickens, and um, and by the time I get done with the chickens, I get to make myself something to eat. And then I sit on the deck to talk with the Lord like I like to do every day. And by the time I'm done with that, it's like, you know, 9 or 10 in the morning. And it's just 90 to 100 degrees outside. And it's just it just hit us. I mean, over here, it's weird. It can be cold. We've had the just a few days ago, like four or five days ago, we had really cold nights. You know, the wind would blow. It had water moisture in the air. The deck was wet in the morning. And then next thing you know, they call it the Chetco effect, but it just has to do with the weather up the river. Just next thing you know, it just gets super dry, super hot, just like that overnight. And just like that overnight, maybe in a week, <laughs> in the next few days, we could get that cold, cold weather again. Um, I stopped here because I want to turn the camera around. I don't know if, it can, if you guys can tell it or not. But when I look up, I'm looking through these clouds, and it's all brown, and that smog, the smoke that's coming in from the fires, it's just walking down here, it just looks ominous. When you, when I usually walk down here, it doesn't look this ominous, and it does. I mean, it should be either super sunny right now, and the wheat breeze is barely blowing through the leaves. But, I mean, it's not gray clouds, it's not white clouds, it's dirty brown clouds, it's, it's smoke, and it's just really ominous. And uh, lately, Victoria's not been liking to walk down here, so she's getting old, and she'll follow me wherever I go, but she's not been too into it. But um, like I said, once again, you look at all the leaves. It just knocked half the leaves off the trees, the wind that came through, and we already walked down around the corner. Uh, but a lot of the limbs got thrown to the side. Here's one I get thrown jabbed in there but these uh, trees the limbs will break off and just come falling down here's some we've had to throw to the side these are the small ones the big ones were back there that we threw off to the side but um but yeah just wanted to turn the camera around just to try to see as we're walking down here i gotta try to walk as best i can without bouncing but i apologize brother sister christ but yeah, um, that's how I'd answer the thing, getting back to the Bible, how I'd answer that. There's going to be times I trust the Bible. The Bible says repentance leads to salvation. Belief that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Believing the gospel doesn't save you. It leads to salvation, just like repentance does. Okay, Confession. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made to salvation. You guys see the line there where it shows the different colors than clouds? The lighter clouds at the bottom and the dark clouds at the top? Yeah, it's all smoke. All of that smoke. There's no regular clouds. It's all smoke. Okay. But, uh, yeah, uh, 
confession is made unto salvation. All three times it says, this is what you have to do to find God's grace. And then the Bible says, ask God to save you. Okay. Um, if the, uh, call upon the name of the Lord and thou shalt be saved. So everybody always grabs the eunuch. The eunuch is in the book of Acts. It's a tr transition book. Uh, like I said, they were still preaching. The apostles were preaching the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ as their king, but they were still also preaching the kingdom of heaven. Today, I don't preach the kingdom of heaven to you. Do not preach the kingdom of heaven at all as far as, you know, you need to believe and get saved because the kingdom of heaven's coming. No, what we do is we preach that uh, you need to hurry up and get saved because the time of Jacob's trouble is coming. The catching away of the body of Christ is going to happen. When the catching away of the body of Christ happens, then you've missed the train. You know, God's the conductor. I love that old, old song. God's the conductor. Okay. And when it leaves, it's not, it won't be back for those who are left behind. <laughs> if the train's not coming back. Okay. So we preach the plan of salvation for today, but we're not preaching. The difference in Acts is they're preaching still the kingdom of heaven. That thousand year reign, they're preaching Jesus Christ coming back to rule and reign to the Jewish people. That's why you have all the uh, signs and wonders that the apostles were told that that's the signs and marks of, a, of an apostle and that they would be doing it to the, for the Jewish people. All right. So that book is a transition book. There's still a lot you can get from the Acts. But when someone tries to grab from Acts, I mean, right now I'm struggling with people attacking the Jesus Christ of the King James Bible and the plan of salvation found in the King James Bible for today, they're attacking it by going to the Old Testament where Jesus is preaching a different gospel. And they go back there and they try to grab Jesus and say, hey, Jesus said this, it's only believe. It's only... And it's like, Jesus preaching repentance because when John the Baptist was put in prison, Jesus went out and started preaching, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That belief is in the physical kingdom, that he's their king, he's the Christ, he's the Messiah, and he's there to rule and reign and save the Jewish people. That's the gospel he was preaching. But they'll ignore that part and just grab the word believe in gospel. They won't tell you what gospel that Jesus was preaching. And they'll grab that and say, See, even Jesus says it's only believe, it's only believe. And it's like they leave out the repent part. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. They leave that part out. So that's, I'm dealing with that a lot with people. Okay. Just slowly walking, but... Like I said, this morning, you can see a little of the cloud, but you can see over there, that's blue skies. Beautiful blue skies. But as soon as you hit there, that's not a cloud, people. This is smoke. It's orange and it just gets all nasty and then the Sun I don't know if it's gonna get the Sun sorry guys don't it jerk, jerk it around but that's what I'm dealing with in these last few days so I did some videos and I haven't uploaded them and then I've tried to do some studies and I just got so hot trying to do one study I realized I had been babbling and I've gotten only through like I have four or five pages of notes and I was like on the second page halfway down and realized I'd been sitting out there for like two hours because that first hour the heat started getting to me and I, I don't know if some of you brothers and there it is way up there that nastiness I don't know if you brothers and sisters remember some of my older videos but uh, when I was in the military I had a major heat stroke and it turned into a seizure disorder a major seizure disorder. I'm so blessed that I'm not as, you know, that I, God's, you know, helped me so much. I can memorize scripture now and I can remember things and God showed me his word. But there for a while, it was just so much, great that I had a hard time remembering things like further in the past. I can remember something that's right here, right now, something I've done repetition a million times, but I had a hard time remembering, you know, your childhood and stuff like that. Um, but the point is I had a major heat stroke. So I was sitting out there doing that video <laughs> And I started babbling and I started realizing I'm sweating like a pig. And uh, I had to turn the camera off so it didn't overheat. Because it had been on for a couple hours uh, recording. And I went inside and I turned everything off. I and I said everything and it's like, I have to redo the study because when I start getting hot, I just start talking. And 
I kind of strayed from the subject of the... I'm not saying I just talked garbage, but you know how what I mean by babbling. You start straying from the topic at hand, or you get stuck on one topic, and you go story after story after story, and it's like you don't need 50 stories. We're here for the Word of God, and we're here for the testimony of the brethren. So some stories are great, but I just realized it was just gotten too hot. And so I've been trying not to do much because I don't want to overheat. And uh, he said, just doing this walk down here is pretty tough on me with the temperature. Because like I said, on the deck it showed 90 degrees plus, and when I came down here, I thought it'd be cooler down here. Because it usually is. When you get on the path, there's the breeze, and you're not on the deck where the metal roof is and everything. But I got down here, and there's no breeze. No breeze whatsoever, hardly. There's some. There's one. I don't know if you can hear it. There's a breeze every once in a while, but for the most part, the breeze is very warm. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so that's just an update what's going on here. I could use your prayers, brothers and sisters of Christ. Always could use your prayers. Um, so there's no fires around here, to my knowledge. I've tried looking online and everything. It's just there's a lot of fires going on in California, and when the wind blows just right, all that junk can just move in a heartbeat. And go completely, oh, I'm talking about all the smoke and the smoke can just go to another place in a heartbeat. So it's coming up north. Um, we've also got some fires going on here in Oregon, so it might be coming from somewhere else. But when I looked online, tried to find out where it's coming from. It says it's coming from California. So I'm not the only one that's having to endure hot, hot weather. I know a lot of the brethren are out there. So uh, I'm praying for you. So if I haven't put out a video in a while, it's not because... You know, nothing super bad or anything. It's just, I can't have the computer on for hours and hours. It's just too hot. One night, it didn't even get that cold. I mean, I think the coldest it got that one night was 80 degrees inside the house. Had all the windows open, had all the fans going all night. And the next morning, it was like 80 degrees in the house. And it's like, wow, it didn't really, it's better than 110, praise the Lord. To God be the glory. I used to be able to get it down to at least like 75, 70 uh, first thing in the morning. And, you know, it was still warm. And like I said, within a couple hours, outside it had already gotten up to 90 degrees. And it was 80 inside. So, I've been sitting in a fan and reading some old books that I've read before that it's been a while. So, and reading the Word of God and talking with the Lord a lot. So my encouragement to the brethren is... When you're stuck in a situation like I am right now, um, just make sure that you uh, spend a lot of time with the Lord. It's a great opportunity to spend a lot of time with the Lord. Cares of this world, put it on hold. Uh, I do my, like I said, I do my chores in the morning that I try to get out there and do it. But the rest of the day, I'm sitting there reading the Bible, reading uh, some Bible books about the Bible. Uh, I've got my tablet that I'll listen to Alexander Scorvey or some. Um, hymns or wordless music and talk with the Lord and honestly not be able to get out and get to do anything is getting boring <laughs> and not be able to do Bible studies and like the big Bible studies and uh, the video and taping and everything it's getting kind of boring but I just want you brothers and sisters Christ know take advantage of situations like that to just spend some time with the Lord spending some quiet time with the Lord is amazing I Flip the cap camera around because Victoria's going to guide us up the hill. <laughs> when it comes to heading back home, she's always in a hurry. But once again, you can see all on this right side. I guess if you're used to the road, it's all rocks and a little bit of grass on the right side. But there's a lot of little tiny twigs and leaves all over the place. This place, this is just on this part of the road. I, didn't even, I haven't even checked the road that heads out. I know people have already left, so they pretty much cleaned up those roads up there on the way to the main road. But these are great times to just, if you can get out in the morning and it's super hot, take a walk and talk with the Lord. And I pray you guys are doing that. Um, I was looking at the, the meaning for my uh, for being in ministry, and one of the things I also want, I want to, might change it up a little bit is, it seems like in these last get days, brothers and sisters in Christ, the goal of this ministry has been to keep people's eyes on Jesus Christ. If you're truly looking for the coming of Jesus Christ to be any day, you're going to make sure your life reflects that. 
you're going to make sure your life is living for the Lord and it lines up with the King James Bible. Okay. You're going to be preaching the gospel, plan of salvation, handing out gospel tracts, leaving gospel tracts places. A lot of my places that I used to leave gospel tracts, I really can't do it anymore. I've been kicked out of a lot of places because they require a mask. And... I don't know if you can see the ominous clouds. I've been kicked out of a lot of places. So I've God's just told me, hey, grab, keep a, I have a whole stack of gospel tracts thanks to a brother in Christ. And I keep it in my pocket. And when I go for walks on the beach, because it seems that's all I can do lately, is walk on the beach in a couple stores to get things. Wait for the wind to go by because it seems to be going by really fast. That wind just hit all out of nowhere. Like I said, it can be kind of creepy when <laughs> walking out here. It's like complete silence, no wind, and then out of nowhere, just the biggest gust of wind. Um, but uh, I change it to the ministry. It's just keeping your eyes on Jesus Christ, handing out gospel tracts. I had to start handing out gospel tracts personally. I, there was no place to lay them anymore. A lot of the places I used to lay them, like the park start put, stopped putting out uh, restrooms. A lot of the restrooms were closed where I used to ha lay them down. Uh, a lot of buildings I'm not allowed to get into anymore because uh, they require a mask and there's no, they won't accept any excuses anymore. So I'm able to go to Fred Myers and Del Kerr is a place outside of town that's like for ranch, uh, outdoor stuff, like I can get my uh, chicken feed and stuff like that. And and yeah, there's a couple of those, but everything else, I, I can't go to Buy Mart anymore. I can't go to Ace Hardware anymore. There's still a lot of other shops that kick me out. I can't go to the old the used bookstore in Gold Beach anymore because they won't let me in there without a mask. Um, and it's just, it's tough, brother and sister Christ. But we're getting to the point where God's saying you need to man up for the men and ladies. You know, that hidden man of the heart gives you some courage. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. And he's like, you're just going to have to start handing them out. You're going to have to dig, dig, dig down and get the strength that G, only Jesus can give you. And you're going to have to start handing the gospel tracts out by hand. And that's what I've been doing on the beach. Uh, still making my beach trips. When I go into town, sometimes when it's super hot up here, I can go into town and it, there's a 10 degree difference. So if it's 90 degrees up here, it's 80 degrees in town. So it's cooler. It's always hotter up here on the mountainside. I gotta catch my breath. But yeah, brother, sister Christ, you just wanna keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Don't let anybody, in these last days, people are really attacking the plan of salvation found in the King James Bible. I'm going through some of Brother Brian's old uh, Bible study videos, like blaspheming the Word of God, and you look at the comment section, I thought people were done, you know, attacking him on it, and there's still people attacking the King James Bible. They're not attacking Brian, they're attacking. They're attacking my Lord and Savior and His perfect written word. That's what they're attacking. And these last days, people have just kind of, feels like we're all fizzling out. We're running out of gas. And we need to keep, we need to keep going. In fact, that's my driveway. Victoria wants to go back. She's heading back. I want to try to keep going a little bit further. I'll have to go lay down here in a bit. But, uh, just look, I just was looking up here at all the leaves and some of the stuff that's broken, but the clouds, you can look up and that's supposed to be the sun. <laughs> it is, but it's just a glowing orange. That's how bad it is. It's getting really bad. And it just wasn't like this yesterday as far as the smoke, the heat it was, but the smoke, no. But brother and sister in Christ, brother and sister Christ, just... Keep your eyes on Jesus Christ with the life you're living. Continue to live your life for the Lord every day. Keep evaluating your home. Make sure it's a godly home. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Free home. And that you're making the right stands according to the King James Bible. Look, I'll say this again. Looking for Jesus Christ is coming is not something that you sit there and you look up in the skies and you look at the clouds. I still do that. I'm not saying it's wrong to do that. 
But I'm saying, brothers and sisters Christ, that that's not what the Bible's talking about. Yes, Jesus is going to come in the clouds and he's going to call his bride home, the catching away of the body of Christ. But when the Bible talks about that blessed hope, looking for that blessed hope, we're supposed to be living a life of Christ now. And living a life of Christ now, according to the Word of God, you're going to go through a lot of suffering. You're going to have a lot of sacrifices. Okay? And what gives us hope is knowing that Jesus is going to come back any day now and take us home. Oops. A loud vehicle. Um, that Jesus Christ can come back. I got an orange glow. That's how bad these clouds are. I got an orange glow on me. Um, the smoke, the smoke. Jesus can come back any day now. And the suffering that we're suffering, the cost, you know, it does cost something to be a Christian. It costs nothing to get saved. It's free. God's grace is a gift. But when you get saved and you say, Lord, you saved me. I belong to you. You're in charge. You tell me what to do. And he starts changing your life. Uh, you're going to realize there's a lot of cost. You're going to lose family members, friends. Okay. Wives, kids, so husbands for the, for the uh, saved sisters in Christ out there. There's a lot of things that you're going to lose when you become a Christian. God cleans up your life. You lose the sin. Praise the Lord. For losing the sin, people aren't going to really, all your old friends and a lot of your family members and co-workers and stuff, they're not going to really want to hang out with you anymore. You're not fun anymore. Okay? There's a cost. And when you're going through this life and you feel depression because there's nothing wrong with a Christian feeling depression or you're vexed by this world or you get frustrated at yourself because of your own falling into temptations and your own struggles with sin and everything, uh, and you get mad at yourself, and you get angry at yourself. Uh, that blessed hope is us, because of that changed life. That's why you feel that way. That's why all these things are happening. It's because of the changed life. And you're keeping your eyes on Jesus Christ. Right? That's what it means to keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. Okay, This life you've changed. You're having the toughest time getting through this life as a Christian, especially in these last days. And... You're looking for that blessed hope. So you have people that say, I believe in the catching away, the pre-time of Jacob's trouble, catching away the body of Christ. And you look at their life, and their life is just so sinful and so wicked. Just so sinful and so wicked. Uh, they don't believe it with their actions. The Bible talks about that time and time again. They profess to know me, but in works, they deny me, being abominable and disobedient. And unto every good work, reprobate. Every good work is reprobate. Why? Because their works need to line up with their words. So, brother and sister Christ, when I say keep your eyes on Jesus Christ, that's because your life reflects it. And I'm always pushing that. So I'm thinking of updating <laughs> one of the things on the purposes of this ministry, is to keep people's eyes on Jesus Christ. Okay? Not the world, not the cares of this world, not the deceitfulness of riches, not the, I'm doing a study that I'm trying to get out with those, um, not the lust of many things, you know, you keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. The Bible says I can do all things through Christ with strength in me. The Bible says he is faithful to forgive. You've got to go to Jesus Christ to get forgiveness. You've got to go to Jesus Christ for strength. You know, it's all about Jesus Christ. Your whole life does. And you've got to keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. So that was just a quick walk and talk. Sorry it took a little while. Didn't mean for it to take this long. Um, just was doing my regular walk and wanted to explain to you, if you haven't seen a video of me for four or five days or up to a week, just letting you know I'm okay, Brother Sister Christ. Thank you for your prayers, for your encouragement. It's just getting so hot out here, and I can't run the computer. When I'm uh, trying to throw a video together, even this video might be too long, but when I try to throw a video together, I'll have to do it at night when it cools down. And when you're rendering, it takes hours to render. And then when you go to try to upload, it takes hours to upload. And my computer cannot be on. It's an old computer, and it, it can't be on that long, not in this heat. So uh, just 
I want to say grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for your prayers again and thank you for your support and uh, just know that I'm praying for you and and uh, Jesus can come back any day now. Keep your eyes on Jesus Christ with the life that you're living and the stands that you take. I'll see you in the next video.